Am I the A-hole stories? First story is titled, Am I the A-hole? My sister is very ill and asked me to take custody of her kids when she passes away, I said no. I feel like backstory is key here so I'll try to be as in-depth as I can within the letter limit and sub rules. I am 28 and she is 34. Me and my sister grew up in a bad family, our dad was alright but also an alcoholic, unfortunately he died when I was 8 and our mom was straight up abusive, our quality of life more or less went from crappy but manageable to horrid. What was even worse for me was my sister leaving a year later to live with her boyfriend leaving me alone with mom. The next years, I won't go in depth on, but I ended up being taken by child services at 13 and put into foster care until I was 18. I more or less decided to move on. I forgot about my past and family, decided not to seek them out or speak to them again. Got a job, put myself through college and with a lot of hiccups, like a lot. I ended up graduating at 24 and have since been doing extremely well for myself. Just to be clear during all this time my sister never once reached out to me either. That was until 3 months ago when I got a long message on social media. No apologies, no discussion of the past, just a long message about how she was sick and needed her brother right now. I wanted to ignore it but my girlfriend convinced me to go see her. It was awkward, she has 4 kids. No husband or boyfriend in sight and I don't think she has any friends either. She reminded me of our mother, all she did was talk about herself. Regardless, I felt bad so visited her a few more times, up until last week that is. She told me she had gotten her affairs in order and she put me as the person she wanted her kids to go to, I immediately told her that was not happening and that she should reach out to their father or something. She cried saying they were not in the picture and begged me, I held firm and ended up leaving when she started screaming at me. I haven't spoken to her since, but I have received a load of messages from her switching between cursing me out and begging to take them. I feel terrible, I could technically give these kids a good life and I'd essentially put them through what I went through if I don't. But I do not want to give up my life and what I have built for the sake of a woman I barely know and kids I know even less. Edit, so, I consistently get replies that are made by people who have obviously not read my post and go off on the premise that I am refusing to take the kids to punish my sister. I said no because a stranger I have not seen since I was 9 asked me to make a life altering decision on taking care of 4 children who were literal strangers to me, 2 of whom are toddlers, I would essentially ruin my own life. Any punishment my sister gets she will get after she passes away on the off chance there is a god. Thanks for all the replies though, some have been very insightful. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Being blood related doesn't mean they're always family. You're not entitled to do everything. The fact that those kids will go through what you went isn't your fault and won't make you an a-hole. Still feels horrible, I just wonder why their dad slash dads are not involved or at least their grandparents. I understand that, you know what being put in a foster care means and how hard it must be to build up your future all alone. But still, don't do any choices under the influence of guilt. The dads probably didn't care enough. No a-holes here. You're not the a-hole for refusing to take custody of, essentially, a stranger's children. But I'm not going to call a dying, desperate woman an a-hole for this either. If someone is basically slipping down a cliff you don't call them an a-hole for swearing or screaming at people for help? Even though that isn't okay behavior in the strictest rights and wrongs of it. I'm appalled at the lack of empathy for her in the comments. It is within your power to help them without taking them yourself. Simply by having an extended family relationship with them while they go through the foster system, you will be someone they can tell if they are not well treated. You can be an advocate for them. Just the fact that a relative is around and is seen to care for them, in itself, gives some protection from predatory and neglectful carers. I think it would be a decent thing, and a reasonable middle ground, to offer to do that much. Yeah, I came here to say no a-holes here for all the same reasons. Yes. But I do think that he should not feel obliged to take the kids in. He shouldn't do it to spite her, but if he is not ready to take care of four kids, that shouldn't be on him. Where do all of you get the idea of me doing it to spite her? It's a really weird assumption. Not the a-hole. If the kids' fathers are known, they would automatically go to them first. No one else could take legal guardianship of the kids without the fathers being contacted. Your sister should contact the fathers about what's going on. Now for the second story. Am I the a-hole for not giving custody of my sister's kids to their father after she passed away? Honestly, everyone has told me I'm not the a-hole, but all of these people were closer to my sister and I than the kid's father. Want some stranger's judgment, 
cause I'm honestly feeling like a huge D here. My sister passed away in January 2020. They had discovered a brain aneurysm, and during surgery to remove it, it ruptured. She ended up passing away on the table. She had sole custody of her three kids, my niece, Jay, who is six, nephew K, who is five, and another niece, L, who is three. They are quite upset, while also not really understanding why she isn't coming back. It's a difficult time for them. Background, my sister and the kid's father, M, got together and she got pregnant fairly quickly. We always felt M tampered with birth control to make sure she got pregnant, but with no proof. We said nothing. She was pregnant again fairly quickly, and debated getting her tubes tied as she had two kids, a boy and a girl, except because of her age the doctor wouldn't do it. Eventually she got pregnant with L, and not long after discovered that M had been using drugs the entire time she knew him. Now, he was quite obviously in the throes of addiction and things that she had brushed off before were starting to add up. I was there for her first two kids' births, spent many sleepless nights helping her, the kids knew and loved me. When she discovered the drug use, she cut ties, moved in with me, and took all her evidence and got full custody of all three children, giving M supervised visitation. He never showed up to the court date. My sister moved out when L was eight months old. I continued to visit her at least three times a week. M heard of my sister's passing, and made a half-assed attempt to reach out. Apparently, he has gone to rehab, gotten clean, has a job, and is living in a two-bedroom apartment. According to M, he and my sister had a verbal agreement that in the event she passed away, if he was stable, he would get custody of the kids. It's believable, my sister was never one to refuse a relationship with him, he has seen them more often recently. My sister had a will. The will states that I get custody of the children, so that's what I went with. Currently, I have full custody of the kids. They're doing a bit better, but they're still kids that miss their mom. I gave him the option of having supervised visitation until he was clean for two years and held down his job for a year, then it could move to unsupervised and overnights. I'm trying to be amicable in this process, he hasn't been as happy but is willing to try and move past the anger and disappointment for his kids, but he's pretty pissed about it still. So, was I in the wrong here? Should I have considered it, and not fought as hard when he contested the will? Edit, I legally have sole custody of the kids. I went through the process with my sister's lawyer, who was responsible for her estate, and helped me figure everything out while I was in the throes of the biggest loss in my life. Now for the top judgment and comments. Not the a-hole. If he was doing his visits he would have known of this passing sooner and would have tried to go through courts. I don't trust him but I think supervised visits should still be a thing. Go by the will and keep custody of these children. They need protection maybe some grief therapy. Keep them safe. He can absolutely still go to court to get custody of his children. Unless he has proven himself to be unfit by the court, it is likely he could get custody of his biological children. Kids aren't property that you can just give to whomever upon your passing. Not the a-hole. Follow the will. And bless you for taking the kids, they'll need stability especially now. Also, it's not like you're keeping the dad away. Also, my sincere condolences. I just want to do what my sister would have wanted for them. Not the a-hole. Your boundaries for visitation are completely reasonable and you are well within your rights as guardian. I'm sorry for your loss. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not uprooting my life and taking in my brother's kids? I, 29 male, and my brother, 24, had, never gotten along. Not gonna lie, still hold a grudge for the collector's limited edition Pokemon Monopoly set from the 90s he ate as a toddler. Well, I was unfortunately given the news that my brother had passed with his wife. They had gone out for a date night and was sideswiped by another drunk driver. Their children were with his father and stepmother. Well, unbeknownst to me, I was offered up as a guardian option. I'm the big showbiz guy who moved to Hollywood and works at, blank, studios. I'm a security guard and I worked there a few times as a temp job for a co-worker. His parents can't take them because they don't make enough to support four kids. And our mom most definitely can't afford to take care of herself let alone children again. That leaves me and my sisters. Seeing as one is a first time mother and the other is a hermit, all eyes are focused on me. Only problem now is that I live 2300 miles away in LA where they are in southern Louisiana. So, in my mother's lifelong quest to get me home, she is not telling me I need to come take in my brother's kids so they aren't forced into the system. 
Here are my points that are not being heard by my mother and other family members who have now rallied together to guilt trip me. 1. I haven't spoke or seen my brother in over a decade, I was 17 at Christmas when we last spoke. 2. I do not know these kids. I've never met them, I don't know their names. Basically, I'm a stranger to them and vice versa, and therefore don't want some random kids in my house. I have enough time watching after my 2 year old goddaughter who loves trying to play with my PS4 games. 3. They want me there and not for them to come here, as to not ruin their school lives and so they can see their grandparents. Mind you, his father and stepmother hate me. And lastly, apparently my sister-in-law was allergic to dogs, and so are her kids. So therefore, my six-year-old German Shep slash Rot mix would have to be rehomed. And I'll be damned if that happens. And I know this is probably just another thing my mother can use against me to guilt me to coming home. First being my grandmother age and health, and now my brother kids. But with all the calls, texts, and FB posts. I'm starting to actually feel bad, like I hate to see any kid go in the system if it can be helped. But like, what am I to do? Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. There are social security survivor benefits and resources for people who can afford to raise children they are becoming guardians of. Claiming financial hardship to pass the responsibility is disingenuous. People make whole livings out of being a foster family and that is possible in cases where family members take in children of deceased or otherwise unavailable parents. My cousin was a foster parent to her own grandchild when her son and his girlfriend were deemed unfit to take the baby home from the hospital. The extra layer of freaking stupid in that situation is the girlfriend was barred from living with minor children, but my cousin's son still was eligible to keep custody of the older child. So, he moved in with his mom and baby with the older kid while his girlfriend stayed in their apartment. My point in saying all this is that your family needs to pursue resources available through their municipal slash county slash state agencies. Foster care wants to place children with relatives, so it might be hectic and procedural, they will guide them through the process. Don't take the bait to come home and solve all the problems. Oh my god. This is wonderful information. Here you go up another option. Not the a-hole. It sucks but you aren't obligated to take his kids. Like you said they are strangers to you. If you give up your life and move back you will be nothing but bitter. I feel the same way, and I know it wouldn't be their fault but part of me feels like I'd resent them for it. And that's just something they shouldn't have to deal with on top of some random stranger now their parent after their parents sudden passing. Plus, I may be wrong, but in my head I'm looking out for them, I know I'm competent enough to take care of a child short term, I get my goddaughter for weekends regularly, but being a parent? That I don't know if I'd be what they need. I really do feel for the kid but if it's not right for you then it's not meant to be. This isn't a perfect world. Not sure if this works but is it possible to spot them a little money monthly to get them by? Yeah, most definitely. If they need anything and it's within my means, I'll help. I feel so bad for those kids. Losing a parent is hard enough, but to lose both at the same time is horrible. That being said, you're not the a-hole for not taking them in. It's also wildly unfair for your family to try to guilt you into doing so, especially since they're trying to not only guilt you but make extra demands of how specifically you are to do so. That's just ridiculous. Does she not have any family that could be a viable option for guardianship? There is absolutely a better option for the kids than you, they need to let it go and find it instead of harassing you about it. I asked. But all I got in info was elderly parents and an only child. It's hard to get visible info from my mother when she yelling at me. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.